Yeah, sure. Um, so as I said, sort of for us, the, the essential, uh, so I'll stand up, the essential experience is still the same. You go to a pub and you have a nice uh, gin and tonic, a nice Guinness, right? But we know the world around us is changing. All the touch points around it, um, increasingly physical and digital is blurring. During the, uh, over the last 18 months during the pandemic, that obviously has been accelerated, right? Thinking about your check-in, your digital menus. So for us, um, the, the real opportunity is how can we help our consumers to connect with our products better, right? And that might be uh, just helping them in a digital way to make the right selection. That might re be rewarding them in a specific way or just serving them really, really relevant content in the right moment. Uh, so today we want to hear from startups that help us sort of bridge that digital and physical, that help us to, to have really relevant communications with our consumers in the right moment. Okay. And when it comes to the startups, what are you looking for in terms of what would be a successful company to pilot? Yeah, so I think for us, it's, it's really understanding what, what makes them special, right? What is that one thing that they do better than everyone else? Because um, and we talked about this a lot, sort of, I used to be on the startup side in, in many different ventures, some successful, some very much not. And uh, I think what is often, as a startup, you have a tendency to try to solve everything, right? So to be the, bit, the, the digital pocket knife that can solve any problem. I want startups or what I really respond to if they tell me what one problem they're fixing for us and how that's different than anyone else. Um, and obviously today, right, I don't expect you to know our business inside out. Um, we, you know, that's, that's something we barely do. But um, just give us sort of really your, your really clear pitch of what your value proposition is, how you can fix it to us. We base, and then, um, Based on your brief, you mentioned that brands are struggling to connect with consumers across all the various marketing touch points uh, and all the various sales channels using just one simple solution. And Hashton solved this problem in a relatively simple way based on two insights. And the first is that your mobile phone number is your unique identifier, okay? It's also your omni-channel identifier. You, you take it everywhere with you. You even take it to the bathroom. Second insight, is that uh, we all use instant messaging platforms all day long. So SMS, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger. So a lot has changed in the last 15 months, to say the least. Let's just take a quick poll. Hands up if you've checked your WhatsApp or SMS in the last hour. Just a really quick show of hands. Okay, so it's good to see that some things remain the same. Uh, and our solution is based on that. We basically built a platform that will serve consumer journeys based on WhatsApp and SMS. So we're not an app. We live and breathe where the consumer already spends the most time. Um, but more than connecting with consumers, there's two more steps. There's converting to purchase, and there's engaging with that consumer. So all of our mobile journeys have three simple steps. Connect, convert, and continue. So that connect phase, you can connect any marketing touch point online or offline, and within a single click or a scan, that consumer lands in their preferred or their chosen messaging service, so WhatsApp or SMS. The second step, convert them to a purchase in any sales channel, on-trade, off-trade, online, offline. And the final step is continue to engage with that consumer after they've made their purchase. And it's the combination of those three elements that make Hashton different. So Hashton is the only company where you'll get media attribution, proof of purchase, and consumer data, all based on one live dashboard. And when you asked before, Benny, what's, what's the difference? It's that power of three. That's what makes Hashton different. And that's where the innovation is. Because it means you can track your conversion live. You can identify where it comes from. And that's massive at the moment. Where is that conversion coming from? Um, and how can we optimize that consumer journey? How can we make it better? And when you start to look at those any scenarios, any consumer, any marketing touch point, any sales channel, you see that you can reach the consumer before they get to store. So you can use your social media, you can use influencers, uh, your CRM. You can connect with the consumer when they get to the store using your point of sale. Uh, you can even connect with a consumer once they've got home using your on-pack, like Nescafe are doing. And once you've made that connection, you can convert the consumer to a purchase. Um, now, we can run cashback offers, so we pay the consumer directly back into their bank account or their PayPal account. 
based simply on a proof of purchase. So that can be a receipt. But where we're working in Africa and India, it can be a picture of the product or a barcode or just a picture of the consumer. But we also do coupons, we do samples, and uh, we can give people a code to your direct-to-consumer site as well. So because we pay consumers directly, it means we can work with any channel, on-trade or off-trade, big or small, online and offline. You can make those offers dynamic, you can have it in situ, you can do gamification, you can base it on live events like the weather or the football. Uh, and finally, how to continue that conversation. Well, we're not a database, so Diageo owns all the first party data. The second thing is, you can serve the same consumer on trade and off trade without having to pay to reach them twice. We just send them a text or a WhatsApp. Third thing is, you can't forget our loyalty offers because they're in your pocket, they're on your phone. And the final thing is, we even turn your consumers into your media by helping them to share offers on WhatsApp and SMS in a way that we can track. So we can track who you share with and if they've made a redemption. So ultimately, it means that with a lot of brands, we're looking at their lower funnel, and the opportunity is really to focus on what matters, conversion and engagement. Thank God that's over. <laughs> that was harrowing. Back on the horse. Good. Right. Presentation. No, well, well done. And, and you're right. I think it's a good, simple solution. I, I absolutely get the solution. So one, one question I have, and we've done different activations through, you know, conversational commerce, things like chatbots and WhatsApp and SMS to a degree. Do you, and I know you guys work globally, right? And you mentioned markets like India or Africa. So um, we know that sometimes in markets like Europe, there's a hesitation around sharing your personal phone number for marketing related you know, um, communications. Could you just talk me through where you've guys seen traction, where you see the biggest opportunity or what you might do to mitigate that hesitation of giving your phone number away? Yeah, I mean, I'll take the second part of that uh, question. Uh, there's great traction in the alcohol sector. So we are working with Bacardi, uh, William Grant, uh, AB InBev to a certain extent. And most of that attraction is based on that omni-channel element. It's serving the consumer any marketing touch point and any sales channel. Um, as for privacy, well, we're five years old, so we were born in the privacy environment. Uh, and everything we do is based on an opt-in. So you click the ad, that's an opt-in. You come to a landing page, there's an opt-in. You're in WhatsApp, there's an opt-in. So you can have 12 opt-ins all the way through the consumer journey. Hopefully we don't, we usually have two or three, but everything is based on you taking that next step. And as soon as you're done with the offer, we don't contact you again. We might do a follow-up, one follow-up. Beyond that, you won't hear from us. So Hashton sits in the background. Okay, great. Um, one more question. I know it's a similar question I ask to everyone and why I do that is because I, in my mind, am trying to think who is the stakeholder or the owner of this in our organization and how can you scale it, right? So just to understand, where, again, what do you guys do? Where does it start and stop? Is this sort of a self-serve campaign tool where we do it? Do you do a sort of campaign? campaign creation consulting element to it? Or, or what does the ideal brief like look like for you guys? Yeah, so I think most clients would be the brand team or the shopper marketing team. But for instance, if you look at Bacardi, we're working with uh, Bacardi and EasyJet to give people a free drink in flight. So it can drag all sorts of people in, the tech team, you know, the EasyJet team, for instance. Uh, but mainly brand marketeers and, and shopper marketeers. And yeah, we take over from the briefing stage and, and everything's taken care of in-house. There's a massive consulting element to it. That's really important. And if it's not there, that's where we're set up um, for suboptimum success, let's say. Because it's all about, okay, what's converting? Where is it converting? How is it converting? So with brands like Nestle, we're meeting every week to say, well, that touch point's getting traction, let's dial it up. Uh, this one isn't working, let's take it away. Let's try some in-store. Um, so that dialogue's massive for us because that's our key point of difference, is the power of three, that combination of uh, the dashboard. Brilliant, thank you. Super, thanks. And the winner of the 20K pay pilot is? Is Hashting. Hashting, there we go. <laughs> Woo. Come up. Here we go. You've got your giant check. Wow. Congratulations. Does this mean I can't get yeah. it tonight? I feel a bit like a used oh, yeah. car salesman exactly. with that massive check. <laughs> Where are we? We're just standing. Here we go.